love sin always hate God because his existence and moral code is offensive to their debauchery, deception, and destructive lifestyles. And while many liberals hate God, they specifically hate Christians and Christianity because Christianity is very clear about God's principles. Instead of some generic and nebulous God, Christians believe in a very specific deity who has laid out very clear codes of conduct in the Bible. And this conduct is often directly opposed to the way that liberals live their lives. Muslims mostly avoid scorn from the left because they're seen as a non-white minority group and thus oppressed. Liberals rarely, if ever, criticize Islam or Muslims, but they love to espouse their hatred of Christians. Even fewer people criticize Judaism or Jews because they know that they'll be instantly branded an anti-Semite and have their career destroyed. You hear about how terrible Islamophobia and supposed anti-Semitism is all the time, but you never hear about Christian phobia. It's not even really seen as a real word, but Christians are the most hated group of people in America, and contrary to popular belief, the most persecuted religious group in the world. And not just in the Middle East or third world countries in Africa, but also in Europe and even the United States. When evangelist Franklin Graham, Billy Graham's son, planned to give a series of sermons around the UK, every venue he booked, including in Birmingham, Liverpool, and Sheffield, canceled on him over what they said was his past homophobic and Islamophobic comments. The city council in San Antonio, Texas, voted to ban Chick-fil-A from their new airport, claiming the restaurant has a legacy of anti-LGBTQ behavior because it's a Christian-owned company and famously stays closed on Sundays, the Lord's Day. Shortly after, another airport in Buffalo, New York, did the same thing for the same reason. New York Magazine then published an article celebrating the ban and listing a bunch of other restaurants that sell chicken sandwiches, recommending people eat there instead so they're not supporting our nation's hate mongers. The New Yorker, different from New York Magazine, complained that Chick-fil-A was infiltrating New York City when they expanded there and called it creepy that their corporate mission statement mentions God. The left hates Hobby Lobby, the mega arts and crafts store, for the same reason. They've donated to various Christian causes, supporting pro-life legislation and opposing gay marriage, and they're also closed on Sundays, an old tradition that many businesses followed up until around the 1980s. So Hobby Lobby is often the target of rabid leftists online who would never even really shop there because they don't have an ounce of creativity in their brains. So they would never even think of even going to an arts and crafts store. One of America's largest Christian legal defense groups, Alliance Defending Freedom, was banned from Amazon.com's charity fundraising program, Amazon Smile, after the Southern Poverty Law Center branded them a hate group because they defend businesses in court, which are bullied by LGBTQ extremists, trying to force them to engage in practices that violate their religious beliefs, like baking a gay wedding cake or catering to gay weddings. At the Jersey Shore, a large pier in the Ocean Grove community that has two sections, one which extends perpendicular to the main walkway near the end, has been interpreted to look like a Christian cross from the air. So it came under attack by LGBTQ extremists who complained that it was a religious symbol. In one of Project Veritas's undercover investigations, they caught an assistant principal in Connecticut on tape saying that he wouldn't hire Christians. Now, if somebody said the same thing about not hiring Jews or Muslims, it would have caused a national scandal with Democrats in Congress and the Justice Department launching an investigation. But this story went virtually unnoticed in the mainstream media. When a group of Christians were spotted hanging out in a coffee shop in Seattle by the owner who's gay, he started yelling at them to leave and saying horrifying things about Jesus that I'm not going to repeat, but it involved the usual kinds of behavior from people in his community. And as the group left, he told them to tell their friends, other Christians, not to come there. The entire incident was captured on video and posted online, but the business owner faced no consequences. Now, if he went on a rant about Jews or Muslims and kicked them out, it would have been one of the top stories in the country, and 
Jewish groups like the ADL would have ran him out of business by suing him for discrimination. But discriminating against a group of Christians is accepted. And sadly, this isn't an isolated instance. It's a growing trend. A man wearing a Jesus Saves shirt in the Mall of America in Minnesota was told by a security guard that he needed to take it off or leave because it was considered to be soliciting, which is a violation of the mall's rules. Just wearing a shirt promoting Jesus was deemed the same as handing out flyers, which is what the ban on soliciting is actually in place to prevent, which is a reasonable policy that nearly every business has. But now just seeing the name Jesus on a t-shirt, if it was too big, is offensive. A Christian group in Virginia called the Family Foundation had their dinner reservations canceled after the owner learned that they oppose abortion and gay marriage. The owner probably posted this on his Instagram about it. And this sort of thing happens a lot more than people know because most of the time such discrimination isn't going to make the news since the business owners aren't going to brag about what they've done on social media. Leftists try to get the husband and wife team, Chip and Joanna Gaines, fired from their HGTV renovation show in 2016, remember this, because they go to church and their church, like any real church, believes in the Bible and doesn't support gay marriage. But despite the controversy, they kept their show and they'll be safe as long as they don't voice their opinions about gay marriage themselves. Other Christian HGTV hosts, the Benham Brothers, not to be confused with the Property Brothers, a different pair of twin brothers on the network, were gonna help people renovate their shabby homes in a new series until they got caught up in a news cycle that smeared them as anti-gay and anti-choice extremists. Because unlike Chip and Joanna Gaines, who remained silent on the issue, the Benham brothers denounced gay marriage. So HGTV fired them. After Donald Sterling, the once owner of the Los Angeles Clippers NBA basketball team, was caught on tape making racist remarks about his girlfriend hanging out with black guys, a woman who was like 50 years younger than him, his girlfriend, the league forced him to sell the team, you may recall. And then some people began arguing that homophobes, meaning Christians who don't support gay marriage, shouldn't be allowed to own an NBA team either and wanted to start a witch hunt to force them to sell their teams as well. Christian schools are under attack by liberal attorney generals who are claiming that it's discrimination against LGBTQ people if Christian schools don't hire them. Similar lawsuits and threats have been made against churches and pastors who refuse to host same-sex weddings. CNN host John King insinuated that Mike Pence's wife should have had her Secret Service protection revoked after she decided to volunteer as an art teacher a few days a week at a Christian school that doesn't allow gays or lesbians to be teachers, saying that taxpayers were subsidizing her life, even though every vice president and their wives receive Secret Service protection. And afterward, first broke that Karen Pence was teaching at this school, which like all real Christian schools, doesn't celebrate LGBTQism like most government run public schools do. The hashtag expose Christian schools trended on Twitter from so many liberals venting their hatred and Christian phobia. Lady Gagme, I'm sorry, Lady Gaga chimed in on the issue attacking Mike Pence during a concert, calling him the worst representation of what it means to be a Christian. CNN then declared that Christianity's future looks more like Lady Gaga than Mike Pence. You know, it's amazing that a bunch of people who hate Jesus are always telling Christians what Jesus would do. Because of the publicity over the controversy, another school in the district announced that they were now refusing to play any sports against the teams at the one that Mrs. Pence taught at. A Catholic club at Georgetown University, America's oldest Catholic college, was labeled a hate group by LGBTQ activists on campus because they believe correctly that marriage is between a man and a woman. So a student senator filed a complaint with the school claiming that the Catholic club's beliefs violated the school policy against 
fostering hatred or intolerance. Why a Catholic school would even allow LGBTQ students to attend is another question, one you're not supposed to ask. Shouldn't Catholic and Christian schools be allowed to expel students who openly celebrate what the Bible condemns? Texas Christian University added a course called the Queer Art of Drag to their curriculum as an elective where students create a drag persona and a lip sync portfolio consisting of videos of them singing and dancing in drag. They also have to perform at the school's annual Night of Drag. The fact that a supposed Christian college would allow and encourage drag shows is ridiculous, and having a course dedicated to it, which gives students credit for it, is blasphemous. And the school should be forced to remove the word Christian from their name. Angry LGBTQ people try to get the St. Louis Cardinals baseball team to cancel their annual Christian Day, which is a post-game event that has been held for over 30 years, where fans who wish to remain in their seats after the game can enjoy speakers, often current or former Cardinals players, talk about Jesus and Christianity. A Marxist LGBTQ extremist group called Stonewall Militant Front organized hoping to shut down a megachurch in Austin, Texas, and doxed the pastor and his son causing them to be flooded with death threats because the church doesn't support gay marriage. Conservative social media personality and former congressional candidate Laura Loomer was banned from Twitter under the leadership of Jack Dorsey for Islamophobic comments about Democrat Congresswoman Elon Omar, where Loomer just pointed out some of the basic teachings of Islam regarding women and LGBTQism. At the time, she had over 250,000 followers, but a simple search any day of the week would bring up countless profanity-filled, vicious, and hateful anti-Christian tweets, but nobody gets suspended or banned from social media for hate speech against Christians. Loomer's account was restored four years later, along with many others after Elon Musk bought the platform, but the point is clear. There's only one religious group that people can post hate speech about on the big tech platforms without any concerns of getting suspended or banned. There is even a really a new religion in America that has the full institutional support of big tech and the government and corporate America and the media. It's called wokeism. It is a religion. They have their own doctrines, members aren't supposed to question, they excommunicate heretics who don't abide by those doctrines, they have their own rituals, and even a path to atonement if someone accidentally commits heresy against their faith by making them go on an apology tour and reaffirming their support for the cause. Really, their religion is Satanism, but you're not supposed to say that. But if you do like watching my more serious monologues like this, then you'll really love reading my books. So order my new one, The War on Conservatives, in paperback from Amazon.com, or download the ebook from any of the major ebook stores, Kindle iBooks, Nook, or Google Play. My books are a lot more in-depth and hardcore than my videos, which I have to tone down a bit for obvious reasons. So if you want my complete uncensored analysis, along with nearly a thousand footnotes sourcing all the material, which makes not just a very informative read, even for those who keep up with the news, but also a valuable resource to give to others to help wake them up as well, then head on over to Amazon.com or click the link in the description below and check it out.